Merriman, Kaiman Pugar, welcome. If you've heard of Karinamo before, then you're either a dedicated nature lover or you're really old. Or at least that was the case up until a few years ago. Having shared our hospitality with adventurers and nature lovers for almost a hundred years, Karen Ambo has up until a few years ago received guests mainly through word of mouth. But the times they are changing, and here we are. According to legend, the location now known as Karanambo was once a favored site of the great spirit Makanaima. It was here among the riverbanks in the shade of the trees that Makanaimo would walk and talk with the leader of the people. As a gift, he enriched the land, and to make work easier, he taught man how to fashion a blade from the rocks. But Makanaima had carelessly broken the black rocks that Kanaima, the spirit of retribution, had laid claim to. Kanaima was so enraged that he twisted the blade to wage war, and it's war that would rip humanity into the many peoples now scattered across the earth. To this day, the Makushi tell of Caribs who once tried to settle here but were turned to stone, of Kanaima spirits who guard the forests of Karanamu in the guise of Jaguar, and the tiny McTurk was himself a powerful P.I. man who made a pact so that he and his descendants might stay. With all this going for it, Karanamu remains a site rich in biodiversity, at the heart of the Rupununi wetlands, where the waters of the Guyana and Amazon systems meet. The main compound established in the 1920s originally served as a Palata collection station that supplied the British Empire. Cattle was a natural complement that provided meat for the family and workers. But Chinese greatest passion was the land itself and he was widely sought after for his extensive knowledge of the wildlife and indigenous languages of British Guyana. In countless letters and publications, it was through the eyes of Tiny McTurk that much of the English-speaking world was introduced to the wonders of South America. And it was no surprise that among the steady stream of adventurers that a young David Attenborough would one day arrive. On one of his earliest field expeditions, Attenborough, became enthralled by Tiny and remained friends with his daughter, Diane, to her own passing in 2015. By the 1980s, with little revenue from cattle, Diane would turn Karanambo's reputation for hospitality and nature to ecotourism and open Karanambo's doors to its first paying guests. Diane's own passion for conservation would be ignited through caring for Frankie or frankincense, an or- orphaned baby otter, and later led to the creation of the world's most successful giant otter reintroduction program. And along with her brother Mickey, the creation of the Karanambo Trust in 1996. You are coming, you are coming. You're not coming to me, you're going round and round and you want to bite me. Karanambo's commitment to empowering local communities would also lay the seeds for the emergence of community-based conservation and community tourism across the Rupununi. So here are 10 reasons to visit Karanambo. Who wouldn't want to claim that they had had drinks with royalty? The world's best collection of Victoria Amazonica are said to be found in the ponds around Karanambo with lily pads up to six foot across and blossoms almost two foot across. It's a special treat sitting surrounded by the theming of life as as these queens of the floral kingdom delicately unfurl at sunset. Top it all off with a generous serving of Karen Ambo's famous rum punch and there are few moments more perfect. At up to six foot in length, these gentle giants are among the nocturnal denizens of the savannas around Karen Ambo and are often found foraging in the early part of the morning. It means an early start with coffee at 5 a.m. accompanied by the dawn chorus, as we sit for first light to set off in search of a giant anteater who's looking for a spot to sleep for the rest of the day. Known for being noisy and not too shy, family groups of giant otters can, if you are lucky, 
be observed among the ponds in the Rupununi River in the Karanambo area. As a result of over 30 years of conservation, Karanambo boasts a healthy population of giant tortoises. Active throughout the day, who doesn't envy them a life dedicated to fishing and playing and fishing and playing and some more playing? Karanambo is home to over 600 species of birds. That accounts for more than half of the national bird list, and more are added each year. With its range of habitats, Karanambo attracts birds year-round, drawing enthusiasts in search of capuchin bird, agami heron, bearded tachuri, zigzag heron, crested doradito, golden mannequin, and many more. There are five species of kingfisher, three species of putu, a half dozen night jars, including nakonde. There are over a dozen heron and egret species that call Karanambo home. These, along with anhinga, neotropical cormorants, and others, nest annually in Crate Pond. And aren't they a noisy lot? Karanambo is a feast of flora and fauna, and no trip at Karanambo can ever be accused of being dull. We are guaranteed to offer up generous servings of wildlife of all types, capybara, foxes, bats, tyra, turtles, snakes, and the occasional jaguar are all fair game for lucky guests. There are six species of monkeys, four species of caiman, and since we're partners with Cayman House, you can arrange to join them for a late night trip of tagging Cayman. Karen Ambo is also anticipated to have over 700 species of fish, making the waters in the Karen Ambo area the most diverse aquatic habitat on Earth. Along with sports fishing, favorites like largemouth, peacock, bass, tigerfish, arowana, and bayara, also known as dracula fish, you'll also find that Karen Ambo is home to its own subspecies of arapaima. And again, the original home of our primate conservation in Guyana, having been the first to institute an annual program of arapaima rescue and relocation. The Karanambo compound is set on a spacious clearing, affectionately known as the hilltop, and is made of individual self-contained cabins. We're not the Ritz, but we are the pinnacle of rustic bush luxury, if there is such a thing with spacious rooms, comfy beds, and indoor plumbing. Each thatched cabin is self-contained, comes equipped with hammocks, solar lighting, and a range of amenities to make your stay a little bit more comfortable. We also do complimentary laundry and turn down, including putting down your mosquito net. Oh, and lest I forget, each cabin also comes replete with its own menagerie of living creatures. You're very welcome. We're proud of our support for local communities, which is often highlighted at our table, where menus feature meals made fresh from ingredients grown, caught, or harvested in situ, or secured from local communities. We like to say that on our breakfast table, the only thing not local is the marmite. Though traditionally we offer meals together with our family and staff at the main dining table, we also have a range of new dining experiences, including barbecue under the stars. And now, in light of current situation, we'll be adding for the first time private and in-room dining. Whether a gentle stroll is your speed or a hefty three-hour rigorous hike is what gets your blood pumping, Karen Ambo has a walk-in trail for you. And it's not too hard to find a quiet spot for forest bathing or just enjoying a sunset here in the place where Raleigh once stood in search of El Dorado. From comfy seats in our library of Guyanan classics to the hammocks found on every veranda and among the trees, you can always find somewhere to put up your feet and have a siesta. And if you've never tried a hammock before, this may be your chance to experience why the hammock is possibly South America's greatest contribution to human history. And last, but by no means least, at the heart of everything we do at Caranambo is our commitment to conservation and the economic empowerment and inclusion of local communities. 
Karanambu is the only location with a special MOU with the Guyana Wildlife Commission that allows for the legal rescue and rehabilitation of wild and endangered species. Today, this includes more than just baby otters, with a juvenile grissom, jagarundi, and margay all having been successfully reintroduced to the wild in the past two years. And our current batch of baby adult otters, well, Sandy and Dwayne are doing the and we expect them to be ready for release by next year. Traveling with kids is never easy, but Karanambo is the only location in the region with activities designed specifically to meet the needs of young adventurers. Year round, kids under five stay free and kids under 10 can stay half price. But families can also take advantage of one of our special discounted seasons. Karanambo is 25% off during Rukununi Escapes, which coincides with the Easter holidays, and 20% off during green season, May to August. We recommend August as the best time to enjoy with your tweens, as the Waterbird Nursery and Crane Pond is at its most active, and the Honey Ponds are offer up easy access for new birders. And for those dedicating enough, there is the chance to spy one of our endangered arapaima, with fry. In October, you can escape for the weekend and join our Karanambo Bird Festival. It's free and provides opportunities to learn about bird watching and bird conservation through fun games and contests. But be sure to walk with your binoculars and brush up in your birding skills because everybody has to play. And birding is easy at Karanambo. When you visit, be sure to look out for our senior team. Manuel Manduk is our operations manager. He spent his life at Karanambo, and in addition to being your host, is one of the region's best bird guides. His wife, Anita, is in charge of our housekeeping team, and as head cook, is responsible for the wonderful meals that we're so well known for. And, well, Uncle Kenneth is one of the oldest bird guides in the Rukunomi, and is not only responsible for training, but is also a talented carpenter who along with his brother is responsible for making many of the structures and furniture you'll find around Karanambo. So now that we've whet your appetite and you've decided you're coming, here's how to get here. If you're thinking of the overland route from the capital city, then be prepared for a 12 to 15 hours drive. It is my favorite way to travel, but most of our guests don't have that time. So for international travelers, we recommend small planes as the most efficient way to get to the Rukunoni. A flight from the airport at Ogo will get you to Leta in an hour, from which it is a mere two to three hours overland to Karanambo. Alternatively, you can get a charter direct to one of our two Karanambo runways, and in an hour and a half and some good planning, you can even arrive for breakfast. If you're traveling from another lodge, then expect a combination of dirt road and a river trip. The most popular route from locations in the north is via Guinea Landing, from which it is a two to three hour journey along the river. Check your itinerary carefully for time of day and make sure to have sunscreen, a hat and water handy because though you're rewarded with some of the most spectacular views of herons, kickfishes and massive black caiman along the way, it can really get hot. Along with your regular list, of what you want to pack for a holiday, you want to be sure to walk with these items, especially a few that you may not have thought about before. Face masks. We'll be working with our local artisans to make masks embellished with bird and other wildlife designs, but it's good to walk with your own for when you're interacting with our team. It's also a good idea to walk with your own water bottle. Karanambo uses reusable bottles and has water in stations around the compound to refill. But if you're not sure you will feel comfortable using one of our reusable bottles, then please walk with one of your own. Waterproof baggage, maybe not something you thought about before, but part of our new protocols will require that all items coming into the compound from outside be sanitized as a precaution. So we recommend you make sure that your baggage can be safely sprayed with disinfectant and alcohol-based disinfectant. And last but not least, a sense of humor. We can't stress this enough. We're all making our way in this new world together. And we need to be able to laugh at each other and ourselves. And make the best when things don't quite go to plan. 
because it's on everybody's mind. To date, the Rupununui has had only one confirmed case of COVID-19, and as a precaution, over 100 people were placed in isolation. So far, there are no other confirmed cases, and some have already been cleared of the mandatory quarantine period with no infection. Karenambo itself is currently closed as a precaution and to help stem the spread of the disease. However, along with our staff, we're currently planning for a tentative opening in August. But this will be very dependent on the conditions in country at the time. In aid of reopening, we will be introducing rigorous new sanitation protocols and are investing in equipment such as electrostatic sprayers for room hygiene, misters to sanitize large areas such as our vehicles, boats, and public spaces. You can expect to see greater emphasis on hand washing a no handshake policy, social distancing requirements when on trips, and a reservation only policy. We'll also be keeping abreast of both national and international recommendations as the days progress to be sure that we're following the best practices at all times. In anticipation of when it's once again safe to travel, we're training everybody, including the wildlife. Do you think they got the social distancing thing down yet? So if you'd like to learn more about visiting Karanambo, conservation at Karanambo, or the history of Karanambo, or you're interested in donating to auto rehabilitation at Karanambo, please feel free to contact us. We'll be waiting. Thank you so much for taking the time to spend with us today. Thank you to all our wonderful friends and family and guests who shared images with us that we were able to use today. Special thank you to Jenna from Emerging Destinations, who has been a virtual saint as we've tried to um, record this <laughs> presentation for you. And a very special thanks to our beloved Nikita Ford, who has made today's presentation possible. Thank you so much. To everyone out there, stay good, stay safe, stay, stay positive, because we're going to get through this together. <laughs>